Welcome in. It's Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show, we have the latest Seattle Seahawks news and rumors. We're talking about a trade for Daniil Hunter. Also, what's going on with Devin Witherspoon and Julian Love. We'll get to all of that and more coming up in just a matter of moments. Before we do, got a friend of mine that's going to be in Seattle this weekend for uh, the very first time, and he loves pizza. He's a big pizza fan. And so he asked me, what's the best place I can get pizza in Seattle? And I was thinking, you know what? I should ask the 12s and get their opinion. So I want to ask you guys, can you help my friend out and tell him where he needs to get pizza in Seattle? Let me know in the comments section what the best place to get pizza is, and we'll get started with today's show. Daniil Hunter is on the trade block of sorts as the Minnesota Vikings have paid several guys uh, over the last several weeks. And Daniil Hunter appears to be the odd man out. Seems unlikely that he will get his there in Minnesota. So that leaves him likely to be traded with trade discussions going on between his camp and and the Minnesota Vikings. And so, what about the idea of potentially bringing him to Seattle? What could that trade look like? We'll show you in a moment. But first, let's catch up to speed on the situation as it stands right now. Hunter plans to skip mandatory minicamp for the Minnesota Vikings. He will not be there. Uh, Fines uh, will be handed for him uh, not going there. He is entering the final year of his contract there with the Minnesota Vikings. He will be a free agent at the end of this upcoming season. He is owed about $5.5 million in guaranteed salary this year. So as you can see, he doesn't cost that much now, but in theory, you sign him to a new contract and you'd be giving him a lot more money later. 12 Man Rising had this to say about the idea of bringing Danell Hunter to Seattle. Hunter is a clear fit with the Seahawks. He's a true power rusher, which is the type of edge rushers Pete Carroll always seems to love, dating back to the Legion of Boom days uh, with Cliff and Michael. Also, when the uh, Vikings fired former head coach Mike Zimmer and brought in Kevin O'Connell, they changed from a 4-3 front to a 3-4 front. Despite the change, Hunter still racked up double-digit sacks regardless with 10 and a half. This is good news because it's a similar role to what defensive coordinator Clint Hurt would potentially want to do with him. Now, I'll say this much. Daniil Hunter, it'd be awesome to have him in Seattle to play with the Seattle Seahawks team. You don't necessarily need Daniil Hunter. It would be a luxury to have him, but not a necessity. But if you do bring him in, All of a sudden, I think you're looking at this Seahawks team as a whole, not just the defense, taking that next step. I think Seattle is among some of the best teams in the NFC, but if you add in Daniil Hunter, you become one of the elite teams in the NFC, belonging in the same conversation as Philadelphia in San Francisco. The trade value of Daniil Hunter, you're looking at giving up about a second-round pick or multiple mid-round picks. So it's very doable to pull this trade off if you want to make it happen. The issue is not the draft capital. You have that, and that wouldn't be too costly. The issue is the long-term money in hand. More on that here in just a second. But first, our pin comment today. Should the Seahawks trade for Daniil Hunter? Let me know what you think. Why for yes, in for no. Chime in in the comments section. Tell me what you think. Why for yes, in for no if the Seahawks should trade for Daniil Hunter or not. In theory, the trade sounds easy, right? The idea of bringing in a Pro Bowl caliber player that's only 28 years old and giving up a second-round pick or a couple mid-round picks, yeah, that makes sense. But then when you factor in the financial factor, because it's all about the Benjamins, right? The Seahawks have expiring contracts coming up uh, after this season uh, involving Uchenna and Wosu, Jordan Brooks, Noah Fant, Bobby Wagner. You got a lot of people to pay, as is, before even mentioning Daniil Hunter. So that's where things get difficult, is just making that money work for you, as Dave Ramsey would say. I just don't know if there's enough money to pay Daniil Hunter in addition to paying those other guys as well. 
The resume on Daniil Hunter is pretty dang good. A former third-round pick in 2015 out of LSU. A three-time Pro Bowler as recently as this past season in 2022. He was an all-rookie team selection by the Pro Football Writers Association in 2015. And one of the things, too, that stands out when you look at Daniil Hunter is the fact that he came back from a neck injury. And not only did he come back from that neck injury that forced him to miss all of 2020, he came back with vengeance. In 2021, in seven games played, he had six sacks, nearly a sack every game he played in 2021. This past season, he's coming off a year where he had 65 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, uh, or, or 12 tackles for loss, 10 and a half sacks in three pass breakups. Daniil Hunter is that dude. He's the real deal. You go back to 2019, he had 14 and a half sacks. So the guy can play. It's a great story to see him come back off that neck injury. He's the real deal. But a lot of concerns, obviously, if Seattle could make that money work to bring him in. Chime in in the comment section. Name a player the Seahawks should add before the season begins. We've heard Pete Carroll say they're not done, that there's still work to be done when it comes to shoring up this defense, in particular the defensive line. What do you think the Seahawks need to do next to tidy up things before the 2023 season begins, whether it's Daniil Hunter or another player out there? Name a player the Seahawks should add before the 2023 season and let me know. Father's Day just around the corner. I got the perfect gift for Dad. It is a Seahawks shirt and hat combination. And good news for you, it's on sale for just $23.99. You can get yours today, chatsports.com slash 12 combo. Maybe you want to get Dad the hat and the shirt. Maybe you split it up and you say, Dad, you get the hat, I get the shirt. Or vice versa. Whatever it may be, makes for a great Father's Day gift. You can order yours now. Take care of Dad. He'll love it. It's in stock. Wall supplies last. I'm telling you, folks, this combo pack goes by quick. We only offer it certain times of the year. Go ahead and get yours today, right in time for Father's Day at chatsports.com slash 12 combo. Heck of a deal. Just $23.99. That's chatsports.com slash 12 combo. Devin Witherspoon, the Seahawks' number five overall pick in this past April's draft, has been named as the Seahawks' top potential breakout star by NFL.com. Not just breakout player, but straight-up breakout star for 2023. Here's more from Adam Rank on Devin Witherspoon. I loved the Seahawks' selection of Witherspoon with the fifth overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. I was in on him when I wrote my mock draft with a twist, pairing him with the Colts at fourth overall. But Seattle looks like the perfect spot. I realize I'm just a commentator, but I dig seeing guys like Jason McCourty agreeing with me. I'm kind of like when the teacher gave you high marks in school. So uh, Adam Rank was uh, one of the guys that was ahead of it uh, compared to anybody connecting the two of Devin Witherspoon in Seattle. And from what we've heard from OTAs and minicamp and everything that's gone on this offseason for the number five pick, expectations are extremely high. And what I love, what I've heard about Devin Witherspoon at this point in time is that he's shown the versatility, the flexibility to hop in, whether it's been an outside corner or slot. And with Mike Jackson emerging with the injury to Tariq Woolen, there's question marks about what this cornerback room is going to look like and where everybody fits. And at the end of the day, based on what we've been told about Devin Witherspoon, how he's performed, they're going to put him out somewhere on this football field. And he should play it at a high level and be awesome this year. I don't know what his role is, but Pete Carroll, Clint Hurt, and company, they're going to figure it out. And Devin Witherspoon, I think, is going to have a fantastic rookie season in Seattle this year. Mel Kuyper Jr. rated uh, Devin Witherspoon as the number one corner in the 2023 draft class. He was also listed as the number eight overall player, a consensus All-American selection last year out of Illinois uh, with that number five pick. Watch out, Seattle secondary is going to be lethal. I can tell you that much here this upcoming season. And uh, I want to ask you, how would you grade the draft pick of Devin Witherspoon? What do you think 
of uh, what he brings to this Seahawks team. Give me a grade for Witherspoon, A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know what you think in the comment section, what your grade for Witherspoon would be for Seattle's pick at number five there. Knowing what you know now, even what we knew previously, it looks pretty good, right? A, B, C, D, or F, grade the pick for me in the comment section below. Folks, you got to subscribe to Seahawks today if you haven't done so already as we bring you the best Seahawks coverage on the World Wide Web as we're talking daily news and rumors. We also have our live shows on Wednesdays, watch parties during the season as well. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. If the Seahawks make a move, whether it's a signing or a trade, whatever it may be, we're going to stop whatever we're doing. We're going to bring you a video as quickly as we can because the 12s, you guys are the absolute best and you deserve it. Join the movement here on Seahawks today and subscribe for free today at youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. That's youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. One final note before we wrap up today. Who do you love? Well, Julian Love, he's not giving Love a bad name. I can tell you that much. Uh, he addressed his role on the team's defense as many people are speculating what are the Seahawks going to do if Jamal Adams is healthy and you have Quandre Diggs there and Julian Love? How does this all necessarily work? Well, Julian Love provided an answer to that this week, saying this. When you have a team, you try to put the best players on the field for each situation. That's my mindset. I have starts at every DB position. So I am a versatile player, and I'm just trying to take advantage. I have a Good group around me, so I don't have to do anything outside of myself. I can just lean on the guy next to me and do my job. And I think the number one thing when you look at Julian Love as he heads towards 2023 is just being available. That's his number one job, right, is being present and somebody that the Seattle Seahawks can depend on this year. If he does that, then they'll find a way to use him accordingly. If Let's say that everything's perfect and everybody's healthy. Then you're going to see the Seahawks run some three high safety techniques. Maybe you see Jamal Adams at times lining up at the linebacker position, whatever it may be. Maybe it's Julian Love playing some nickel corner. Julian Love's going to be out in the football field, and he's got the right idea for where he belongs with the Seattle Seahawks team. He's going to be good in good shape. The Seahawks are going to have a big impact out of him. I'm not worried. I think he's got the right mindset that he is going to be used in any way possible, and they're going to get the most out of him, and he should be a dynamic playmaker for Seattle this season. Julian Love began his career uh, with the New York Football Giants and uh, signed with Seattle this offseason, a former fourth-round pick back in 2019 out of Notre Dame. And when we talk about being present and being available, think about this. Julian Love, uh, knock on wood here, folks, has only missed two games his entire career to this point. So he's done a good job of being out there and being a guy that you can depend on. So that's very good to see for Julian Love of uh, what he's brought to the table uh, as far as that goes. Who will be the best player on Seattle's defense this year? Is it going to be a guy like Julian Love? Is it Bobby Wagner? Uh, who's it going to be? Is it Devin Witherspoon or Tariq Woolen? Let me know who you believe will be the best player on the Seahawks defense in 2023. Give me one name that comes to mind who you think will be the MVP of the Seattle Seahawks defense this upcoming season. As always, uh, you can find me on social media, on the Facebook, Instagram, uh, also on Twitter as well, at Tyler Jones Live. I'm talking about your Seattle Seahawks there. Just because the show ends here on Seahawks today, doesn't mean we're ever done talking about Seahawks on uh, social media and other platforms as well. Give me a follow on those platforms, and I shall see you next time right here on this very program, Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Subscribe now for free, and we will see you on the other side. Appreciate you joining us. We'll see you next time right here on Seahawks Today.